Good morning, everyone. My name is Greg Mazzola, and I am the VP of Marketing and Communications at Colby Sawyer College. Um, joining us today is Hillary Walra, the Dean for the School of Arts and Sciences. Welcome, Hillary. Thanks, Greg. It's nice to be here. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank all those prospective Colby Sawyer students and families who sent in questions ahead of this session. So what we'll do now is we'll turn the session over to Hillary, who has a uh, advising presentation. Thanks, Greg. Okay, so as Greg said, I'm going to provide an introduction to advising at Colby Sawyer College. Welcome. Each of you, as an incoming student, first year or transfer, will be assigned an academic advisor someone who has expertise in your major field. Academic advisors are here to get to know you and we're here to help. Advising is intended to support your personal, academic, and career goals. There are a lot of benefits of academic advising. Advising helps you make effective decisions concerning your degree and career goals. And advisors help you develop an educational plan for achieving those goals, namely selecting courses to fulfill that plan. Advising helps you understand the value of the liberal education requirements, the courses that all students, regardless of major, take across the college. And advising can help you utilize resources on campus to assist in your goals. Resources such as the Student Learning Collaborative for peer tutoring, access resources for disability accommodations, the Harrington Center for experiential learning such as study abroad and internships, and Baird Health Center for mental health counseling. Advisors can help you make use of referrals to these campus resources as needed, or you can seek out these resources yourself. Advising can help you read and utilize a planning worksheet to map out which courses you'll take each semester in order to meet your degree requirements, which means that you can graduate in a timely manner based upon your educational plan. With guidance, advisors encourage initiative and responsibility. We're here to help you, we're here to encourage you, but we're not here to do things for you. The advising process is developmental. At the beginning, in your first semester, in your first year, we take a much more hands-on approach, teaching you everything that you need to know about the processes, suggesting things to consider, helping you with these important first steps and the ways to do them. Advising is systematic. Your advisors know college policies and we know college procedures. And it's also informed. As I mentioned, your major is someone, uh, your advisor, excuse me, is someone with expertise in your major field. So they can help you with specific requirements for your major, as well as thinking ahead about moving out into that profession after graduation. Advising is meant to be educational, to work in tandem with your courses, as well as your co-curricular experiences. And it's relational. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship between you and your advisor. Because of that, advising is really individual. I give equal support to each of my advisees, uh, but I do so in different ways, depending on the styles of communication that we've developed and the needs and wants that each advisee has identified for their goals. In other words, the advising process is really one of facilitating. We work with you and help you learn how to do what you want to do and get what you need. Great, so how do we start? What's the first step for advising? Course registration. You'll generally register for four courses per semester. In your first semester, you'll start both courses that are required for your major and courses for the liberal education program. So wait, what exactly is the liberal education program? It's a common academic experience across all majors at the college. It's 10 course types, not specific required courses, but course types that all students take to gain breadth and transferable skill sets that are relevant to our evolving world across professions. 
the liberal education courses. The first one for all first year students, the common foundation is a first year experience course. Perspectives on fill in the blank, different topics, but common learning in terms of critical thinking, working with a cohort of fellow students, discussing, reading, writing, and presenting. There are two proficiency courses in writing and math. You'll select a math course based on your level experience coming in from high school or transferring. And there are six core areas um, that we think are really important for every student to experience in terms of a breadth of ways of knowing. These core areas are the arts, history, humanities, literature, sciences, and social sciences. It's really key that I say areas or categories because there's not a specific course in each of these areas for you to take. You can select a subject that's of the most interest to you within each of these core areas. Finally, the 10th liberal education course that's meant to help you synthesize all of this learning across disciplines is an integrative experience course, a multidisciplinary course that looks at one issue from a lot of different perspectives, much like the first year experience course, but building on everything you've learned in between your first semester and the time that you take your integrative experience. There are also two key elements for synthesis that dovetail between liberal education and your major, and that's your internship and your capstone. All students at Colby Sawyer are required to complete internships. These professional experiences are really worthwhile for students and more than half of them tend to yield job offers at internship sites. The capstone is a final research or creative project in your major field, which again lets you synthesize and pull together all of your learning and apply it in a really meaningful, in-depth way. All of these experiences put together have really good professional outcomes for our students. More than 99% of our graduates are employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. All first year students take that FYE 101, the first year experience course in the fall. These FYE courses address wicked problems from multiple perspectives and disciplines. Wicked problems is a sociological term for those complex, messy, intractable problems that are impacted by a lot of factors. Think poverty, climate change, pandemic, big topics like that. This coming fall, these are the topics that our FYE courses will cover. Change making, children, community, education, equality, equity, and justice, family, food, and global issues. So you can think about what might be of most interest to you. Nearly all first year students take Writing 101, Introduction to Academic Writing, in the fall or spring, depending on major. I say nearly all because some students come in with AP credit or transfer credit from a community college or other institution. Based on your major, you'll be advised to take other liberal education courses and other major courses in various semesters. These guidelines are called suggested registration sequences and they can be found in the college catalog. For now, you just need to select preferences for your first semester. Read course descriptions and rank your top FYE, first year experience topics. You can also select preferences for other lib ed courses if those are designated for the first semester in your major. We'll provide you with a worksheet with just the first semester of your suggested registration sequence to reference. Stay tuned for details on live advising sessions with deans and faculty, as well as submission instructions for submitting your course preferences. And if you're eager to get started on your personal, academic, and career goals, I invite you to start the summer reading for all first year students now. It's called Callings, The Purpose and Passion of Work by Dave Isay, the founder of StoryCorps. And it's a great read to get you thinking about vocation and what it is that you love to do and want to do. Any questions? Hillary, that was a fantastic overview. Thank you so much. And thank you for providing your email address so families can follow up with you. Uh, as I alluded to earlier in the session, 
we had some questions that came in advance. So why don't we jump into those? Sounds good. Uh, the first one is, and this is one we hear really quite often is, how do I register for my courses? Yes, so this is a two-part answer. Every semester, once you're at Colby Sawyer, you'll register online in collaboration with your academic advisor. For your first incoming semester though, you will select your preferences, submit them, and the registrar will manually register you for courses. So please stay tuned for details via email on how to submit your course preferences this year. Excellent. Uh, let's talk about advisors for a second. Um, let's say you've been given an advisor, but um, over the course of your academic year, you um, have a particular professor that you'd like to take over in that advising role. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. We first assign advisors based on major area, also with an eye toward your first semester instructors, if there's an overlap there. Um, but ideally, we really want your advisor to be someone with whom you do connect. So if you find another faculty in your major area who you'd like to work with as your advisor, you're welcome to select that person. There's an online form and you can make that change at any time. So we often see students come in as undeclared majors. Um, what does choosing a major look like for me if I come in as an undeclared student? Yeah, so first off, I welcome the exploration of undeclared students. You don't need to feel like you have to have a major declared when you come in. Undeclared majors will be assigned advisors who are specially trained and equipped to help guide them through the major selection process. And they'll also all register for a course together in their first semester, a multidisciplinary studies course that gives a sampling of different disciplines and can help students start to identify areas of interest for taking further courses and possibly selecting a major in. Once students do decide what major they would like to do, they can declare that major, and we also encourage them to select an advisor um, with expertise in that major for guidance on specific courses in the program. Excellent. One question we hear quite often comes from parents um, who ask if their son or daughter can switch majors um, during their academic uh, program. Absolutely. Uh, within reason, based on timing, but um, there is certainly usually time to change majors. Um, I would say within the first two years for most majors, but it depends on the program requirements. Um, if you think that you might want to change majors, it's worth chatting with your academic advisor sooner rather than later to explore the possibilities. Your academic advisor can pull up a sample planning worksheet and look at requirements for the new major or majors that you're considering. Um, to see if there's any overlap with courses that you've already taken. And of course, regardless of major requirements, those liberal education requirements are for every student at the college. So those will, um, will still be fulfilled and you'll be on track for that. Another resource for thinking about switching majors is our Director of Student Success and Retention, who can help guide students and figure out which major might be in keeping with their skill sets and future uh, career goals. Hillary, that's really good information to have. So one last question. Um, can you talk about what a typical course load looks like? Yes, so a typical course load is four courses. Each course is four credits uh, for the most part. We have some one and two credit courses, um, but those four four credit courses tally up to 16 credits per semester. Now, the total requirements for a degree is 120 credits. So if you run the math, it's not imperative to do a full 16 credit uh, semester load every semester, but that's the usual load. When I'm talking with my advisees to plan their semesters and their course selections, I encourage them to think about the balance of courses that they're taking in a semester, not just how many. So within that standard four course load, to think about requirements for studio classes, lab classes, writing classes, discussion classes, lecture classes, um, and thinking what would be a good balance for them in terms of their, um, their best ways of working, their study habits, and their time availability, taking into account um, things such as athletics or jobs or other things that might factor into a given semester. That's really great information, thank you. So Hillary, again, appreciate you taking the time to be here today. I want to thank all those prospective students and families who joined us for the session today, and we hope we see you over the summer, and have a great day. Yes, take care, everyone.